Republican Party of Texas. It is an honor today to be here with you for such an important announcement. You'll hear soon from our speakers, but before we get to that, I want to take a moment and recognize some members in the audience. Uh, Representative John Kempel. Representative-elect John Lujan. What a fantastic victory. And congratulations on being sworn in tomorrow. Um, we have Representative Jim Murphy. Representative Steve Allison. Representative Drew Jarvey. Former Representative Aaron Payne, yes. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Chairman of the Republican Party of Texas, Matt Rinaldi, thank you for joining us today. We have many, many local officials and other party officials who are with us today. Thank you all for being here. And thank you for what you do for the Republican Party, our state, and Texas citizens. Now I'll turn it over to the Texas House Speaker, Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Appreciate that. I mean, last time I was in Floresville, I was on a MS-150 bike ride. For if you're not aware of that, it's a 150 mile bike ride. And this one started in San Antonio, ended in the Corpus. And that was the last time I rode that bike. I had four children since then. Those tires have been flat, sitting in my garage. Uh, gave that up after that ride. It rained the entire day from uh, the entire first day, uh, and it was pouring out rain through through Floresville. So it's glad to be back here, not on a bike this time. Uh, this time is a really a once in a decade opportunity for the Republican Party. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, Mayor gonzalez Dippel, thank you for uh, welcoming us to, to Floresville. I appreciate my House members for being here. Mayor, thank you. All my fellow House members and former House members and to be House members as of tomorrow noon. Uh, but especially uh, John Kimball, who served Wilson County so well over his tenure here, and I know you're reluctant to give up Wilson County, but redistricting is what it is, and so someone else needs to pick up Wilson County. So thank you, John Kimple, for your service to Wilson County. Yeah. I want to appreciate uh, Alan Carvajal, the owner of this coffee shop, for having us. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Mr. Guillen knows what he's doing. There's a tab here for uh, coffee, so please come get coffee after this and support the coffee shop. Uh, we all know what small businesses went through in, in the pandemic, and the fact that you know you come back strong and you're up and running, we're so glad to see that. And that's you're the backbone of the Texas economy. So thank you so much for everything you do. Park, thank you for being here and for being a stalwart in, in the Republican Party. And uh, Mr. Mark Rinaldi, my former uh, classmate, uh, good to see you again. And I appreciate y'all's service to the Republican Party of Texas. Uh, you know, I'm finishing, I'm, I'm in my fourth term here in the Texas House. And from day one, I've always counted Ryan Guillen as a dear friend. And anyone who served with Ryan Guillen will count him as a dear friend, a true, genuine, servant to the state of Texas and to the district. His integrity and character are why he's always been a leader without ever seeking the spotlight. One of the most efficient, one of the most effective members of the House, he's a bill-passing machine. <laughs> he passed more bills in one session than I filed my entire tenure. That's how good Ryan Gein is. We've been on different sides of the aisle, but we've always shared a commitment to pro-family, pro-business, pro-liberty values that have bonded our two communities. And as friends in the four terms that we've served together, that bond continue to grow. I am proud to introduce my friend, Chairman Ron Gale. It's great to be here in Floresville. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> I uh, let me first of all I want to thank Speaker Dave Feeling Feeling for his uh, leadership, his friendship, and 
for his unequivocal support over the last year and and over the last four years, uh, four terms I guess, right? Um, and in the run up to today. Uh, and of course, I want to thank Governor Greg Abbott for your leadership and your friendship over the years and for your support and your presence here today. I, I'm truly honored. Yeah. I also want to mention uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick uh, called me this morning, sent me his regards. Uh, he couldn't he couldn't make it today, but he sent me his statement and his endorsement and and you know his good thoughts and everything. And so I appreciate him as well. Um, Cat Parks, thank you for for being here, and of course, uh, Chairman Matt Rinaldi for for your friendship and for all your help from the very beginning here. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um, a special thanks to the Carvajal family um, for hosting us here today. I met his dad here, who's really proud of of, uh, of this place as well, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to a long-term relationship, and, and I really thank you so much for having us here. Yeah. Thank you, my buddy John Kempel. Uh, for your friendship over the years, for being here today, for your support, uh, for all you've done for Wilson County. And uh, I know that uh, you're mad at me for taking Wilson County from you right now, but, uh, but I know that we're gonna work together uh, and we're gonna make sure that Wilson County is, uh, continues to do great. And so uh, thank you, man, I, I really appreciate it. And to all my house colleagues that are here, Thank you all for being here. You're my family, you're my friends, and uh, it means a lot to me that y'all are here. Um, and of course, I'm absolutely grateful today as I make this announcement for the unconditional support of my wife, Dalinda, my best friend. Dalinda and I were high school sweethearts and we graduated uh, Texas A&M together. <laughs> we're, we're blessed to, to have our two young daughters, Cinco and Viva who couldn't be here today, they wanted to be here, but they said, Dad, we have school, and we, you know, they, they, uh, they said, we better, we better not go, and so they're, uh, I'm really, really glad that they picked school over, over this, yeah, that's great. <laughs> as, a, uh, as a sixth generation South Texas rancher, I, I picked up my conservative values from my parents and from my grandparents growing up on the ranch where I, worked as a ranch hand and uh, at our family feed store where I worked to help my family make ends meet. At a young age, I, I learned the value of hard work and of self-sufficiency. I, I learned it from them. I learned the importance of faith and how it must be central to how we live our daily lives. Amen. I gained a, a strong appreciation for the Second Amendment and I learned just how difficult it is to run a business, especially a cattle business. After my mom and my stepdad died in a car accident at a young age, I had to grow up quickly. I followed in my family's footsteps. I became an ag teacher. And then at age 24, I ran for the legislature. And somehow I won. Uh, and since then, I've, I've worked hard to serve the people of South Texas and to try to make a difference in the short time that we have here on Earth. Over the years, I've worked to cut taxes to create jobs, to protect our oil field jobs, to support our troops and our law enforcement and to secure the border, to defend our, to, to defend our property rights, our Second Amendment rights, and to defend the lives of the unborn. Amen. Growing up in South Texas, I, I grew up among Democrats. I ran for office as a Democrat. And just last year, I, I won re-election as a Democrat by a 17-point margin, while at the same time, President Trump won the district by 13 points. But friends, something is happening in South Texas, and many of us are waking up to the fact that the values of those in Washington, D.C. are not our values, are not the values of most Texans, certainly not the values of South Texas.
the ideology of defunding the police, of destroying the oil and gas industry, and of the chaos at our border is disastrous for those of us who live here in South Texas. That's why after much thought and much prayer with my family, today I'm announcing that I'll proudly be running as a Republican to represent After years of voting to protect the Second Amendment, after years of voting to protect the unborn and against tax increases and to secure the border, I now look forward to not having to break with my party in order to do so. Yeah. In the weeks and months ahead, I look forward to talking to each one of you in this 11 county district about our shared values and to humbly ask, for your support. Again, thank you all for being here today. It means the world to me and my wife and my family. I do not do this lightly, but I know that this is the right decision. Thanks again, and God bless you all. It's now an honor of mine to introduce the governor of Texas, who he and I, well, two things we share in common. One, we after five straight losses from the University of Texas, we need some good news, right? <laughs> and today, today really helps with those five straight losses. So with that being said, he actually suffered those losses on his birthday, by the way. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. But something else we have in common is we are ready, willing, and able to travel to every corner of the state to grow the Republican Party like we're doing today in Floresville, Texas. And it starts with Brian Ginn, and who knows where it ends, right? But this governor right here has gone through maybe the most difficult two years any governor has gone through in the history of the state of Texas. And he's made decisions that none of us want to think about making, right? But here he is strong as ever, and growing the Republican Party. Thank you, Governor Randall. Well, thank you, Speaker, and I'm here for one primary reason, and that is to say, Ryan again, welcome to the Republican Party of Texas. Great to be back in Wilson County. Many of you here whose faces I cannot see because of the people up front. You will remember that I was here in Wilson County for your Lincoln Day dinner a few months ago. One thing that I know, Wilson County is going to step up and do their part to keep Texas red. <laughs> As you heard Ryan Ginn talking about why it is that he's changing and announcing today that he is a Republican state representative effective today is because of all of those ideas and values that he articulated. You heard him and he, he has always sought to cut property taxes and to cut the stranglehold of red tape and regulations in the state of Texas. He has defended private property rights. He has created more jobs and fought for ideas and values that will lead to that job creation, including jobs in the great paying oil and gas sector in the Lone Star State. <laughs> Something else that Representative Gain alluded to that we must emphasize today, and that is there is a big political change that is taking place in South Texas. It's a change ushered in in part by the far leftist socialistic moves that are being made by Democrats in South Texas. The Democrats no longer represent either the, the values of the people or the values of the Hispanic community in South Texas. It is time for a Republican to represent the real values of the people of South Texas. You know, if, if you look at what was announced today, it, it may seem like it is something that occurred today. But this is something that has been 
a movement that's taken place for a decade uh, for now and uh, is something that has been candidly the worst kept secret in the Capitol. Everybody has known uh, that Ryan Ginn is, is really a Republican who was attached to the wrong label. Ryan, we're glad you finally came out of the closet. <laughs> But I, I, I want to show everybody here to let you know the way that things are changing. And so this is an important day, but it's just the latest chapter and the changes that we've seen. It was back in uh, 2012 when we had J.M. Lozano. Where is J.M.? Well, he's going to be here. So we had J.M. Lozano in 2012 announced that he was switching parties from the Democrat Party to the Republican Party. And he has ran uh, as a solid Republican and won as a solid Republican ever since, expanding the Republican footprint in South Texas. We do have with us today, however, uh, we have with us Representative John Lujan. John Lujan first won office in a Democrat district in 2016 to the Texas House of Representatives. He later lost that race, but uh, just a few weeks ago, he won that seat again, a Democrat seat where they voted a Republican back into the Texas House of Representatives. And then we have also Pete Flores. Is Pete with us here today? There he is, back there. Come on up here a little bit. Make sure people see you here. So Pete, Pete Flores did the exact same thing. It was back in 2018 when Pete Flores first ran for a Senate seat in the state of Texas that, am I correct to say, it had never in Texas history been held by a Republican before you. Is that correct? Since the Civil War. Governor. Since the Civil War had never been held by a Republican. Pete Flores ran in that seat uh, in the western part of San Antonio. It goes all the way down to the border and has more border mileage than any other state Senate seat in the state of Texas a Republican, Pete Flores won that race. He is back on the ballot again this year. He will win it again and turn that seat into a Republican seat here in the Lone Star State. But if you would bear with me, I want to share with you some astonishing details, some astonishing facts that show the shifts that we are seeing in South Texas. Because I have with me a list of the 10 biggest Republican swings in blue counties during the time period from 2016 to 2020. So over the past four years, there have been massive swings in blue counties across America. These counties I'm talking about are the top 10 counties in the United States of America where you had a massive swing from Democrat to Republican. Number one in the United States of America is Star County. Woo! Where there, was, County. there you go. Where there was a 55% point swing in favor of Republicans from 2016 to 2020. Woo! Next is Maverick County that had a 45% Republican swing. Next is Jim Hall County with a 39% Republican swing. Then Duval County with a 33% Republican swing. Brooks County with a 32% Republican swing. Webb County, the home of Laredo, with a 28% Republican swing. Zavala County with a 26 Republican swing. And Zavala County was also a county won by President Trump in the last election. And then Willisley County with a 25% Republican swing. Hidalgo County yeah. with a 23% Republican swing. So those are the nine of the top 10 counties in the United States that shifted on the blue counties that shifted uh, with massive Republican gains. I'll, I'll dip down to number 12, which was Cameron County that saw a Republican swing of 19%. The reason for these changes are abundantly clear and they were articulated by Ryan Ginn earlier. And that's because Democrats no longer represent the values 
of the Hispanic communities in South Texas. He talked about things such as the idiotic defund the police strategies uh, that the Democrats are trying to impose here in Texas and the United States of America. Republicans support our law enforcement officers, period. Brian Ginn talked about the value and the importance of oil and gas jobs. They are good paying jobs for so many people in this state and Republicans will not allow the leftist Democrats to crush the oil and gas industry in Texas and replace it with the Green New Deal. We talked about the chaos that we've seen arise from the open border policies that Democrats, including people like Beto, have been advancing in this state. One thing about Republicans, we support legal immigration into the United States. We do not support lawless and reckless open border policies. We will not tolerate that, and Texas will step up and secure our border. Something else about the Hispanic community, especially in South Texas. We know in the hearts of Hispanics is an entrepreneurial spirit. You see that with Allen in, in this store right here. But you see it in stores that are owned and operated by Hispanics from here in Wilson County all the way down to the Rio Grande Valley. And that is why you see Hispanics in particular rebelling against this attempt by the Democrats to impose socialism in our state and in our country. Texas is the quintessential entrepreneurial state. Texas is number one in the United States for doing business. And we will tell the world what the Democrat socialists will not. And that is, it has been capitalism in Texas and the United States that has lifted more people out of poverty, given more people opportunity than all of the socialistic programs combined, and we will not allow the Democrat socialists to destroy Texas or the United States of America. For the past 10 years, there has been a slogan that by the Democrats, a slogan that I will submit to you has turned out to be true. The Democrats have sworn every election cycle that Democra uh, demographics are destiny. And what they meant by that is the growing Hispanic population in the state of Texas would lead to the destiny of the future of politics in the state. For that much, they are right. However, they were wrong thinking that the demographic change would lead to a benefit for the Democrat Party. They misread the hearts, the souls, the minds, the vision, the desire, and the future sought by the Hispanic community. The values of the Hispanic community are tied and closely connected to the Republican Party, not the Democrat Party, and the future of the state of Texas will be that Republican Party with a growing number of Hispanics joining the Republican Party. The people of South Texas, they deserve people in the state capitol who will represent their values. Ryan Gian represents their values, and that is exactly why he was correct to today announce he is a member of the Republican Party of Texas. Thank you all, God bless you all, and God bless the great state of Texas. Thank you, Governor, appreciate you being here. Wonderful remarks. I, I, I want to remind the audience as well that in, uh, in 20, uh, 2011, we had two other folks switch parties, Mr. Pena and Mr. River, my predecessor. And uh, 
And I was, uh, Alan was my, Alan Rivers my predecessor. I represent a border community too. It just happened to be Louisiana. Uh, they're a different country, they speak a different language, they have different laws. Uh, but truthfully, I was the first uh, non-incumbent to win in House District 21 since Reconstruction as well. And now that district is over 80% Republican. So it's happening across the state of Texas. Right. Uh, we're seeing communities embrace conservative values in the Republican Party. And you know, Mr. Lujan will be sworn in tomorrow at noon. The new uh, representative from Bear County who flipped the seat and will keep that seat uh, as long as he wants it, as long as his wife lets him have it. That's, that's the rule of my house. And we're not going to cede any ground in the Democratic Party. The gains we made today and tomorrow, we're going to keep. And we are going to grow this this caucus. We're going to grow this majority. And. Ryan Gian's re-election is my number one priority. This is important as my own re-election. So uh, he will be back representing Wilson County and the rest of his district for as long as his wife lets him do. So <laughs> thank you all for being here. I want to welcome Ryan Gian to the Republican Party one more time. Let's give a big round of applause and his family. Ideally, we start with the Wilson Daily News. Wilson Daily News here. The question? Or not? All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Spita. Yeah, question for Representative Ian. Sure. Can you just talk a little more about the role of redistricting played in this? Obviously, your, your critics today are going to say you're just doing this because the district got much more Republican, even though you did outperform Trump, you know, so overwhelmingly last cycle. How do you, how do you respond to that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, I won re-election as a Democrat in 2020 uh, by 17 points. Uh, at the same time, Trump won by 13. And so I think that's uh, indicative of the fact that what we're doing here is, is doing what is uh, the line with our values. Obviously, um, values that I hold dear, that I've always hold dear, align better with the Republican Party. And that's what we're doing. And Patrick, I'll add to that. I discussed this with Ron months ago. Uh, Senior session was over early this summer. Before census numbers came out, before we had any idea what the district would look like, we discussed this. And people have been working on Ron for several years. It's, it's the worst kept secret in Austin that folks have been trying to get Ron to come over to the Republican Party. So I don't think the district team had as much to do with it as uh, we make that. Yes, sir. Uh, Dan, um, you said that there's a shift going on in South Texas. How long has this been going on? And how quickly has it been set up in recent years? It's been going on for a while. I mean, if you look at uh, trends over the last uh, 10 years or so, 10, 12 years, you can see a, 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 a direct trend um, uh, but of course, it uh, got a lot more sped up in the last couple of years. Yes, ma'am? Yes, you gave the Wilson County News a bit of a promotion. We're not a Wilson Daily, it's Wilson County. Okay. And we do welcome you all here, including Representative Guillen and the Governor, and thank you for coming to Floresville. You got it. I'll remind you that uh, Ronald Reagan Phil Graham and Rick Perry all switched parties at one point in their career. And they did pretty well. So Ron's in good company. So yeah. thank y'all for welcoming. Yes, yes, sir. Mr. Speaker, a question for Ryan has been waiting for you. Ryan, this receipt had a GOP dominates the leadership in Texas, including the governor, House, and the Senate. Do you feel that being in the majority, being part of the party with the control of the first strings in particular? you can now bring home resources and funding back to your border constituents. Of course, of course. Um, no question about it. Uh, I, I, I think there's a, a, a big saying that um, if, you're not, uh, if you're not at the table, uh, then you're on the menu. And uh, I think uh, this helps me be at the table. Mr. Speaker, as a follow-up to that, it's an obvious segue. In the 80th Texas legislative session, Ryan won the 
the vice chair of corporation, that's the trough. Would you agree to his constituents here today that you would make him return him the vice chair of appropriation? It's an excellent question and a highly legal question. So I cannot promise any of that, but let me just say that Ryan's always been productive for his district. Right. No matter what community he's represented, he's always been productive, regardless of the party he's been a part of. He's always he's well respected on both sides of the aisle. Again, he's a bill passing machine. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I laid out a bill by Ryan Dean today on the, uh, this session on the House floor. Uh, maybe do one today. And we're not even in session. Maybe lay out a few bills today. But that's how productive he is. So regardless of the party he's been associated with for the last two decades, he's been a, a impactful and effective, and he will continue to do so. Last question. Last question. Yes, ma'am. Governor, we did want to hear your thoughts on the announcement this morning from Beto throwing his hat in the ring for the race in 2020. You know, we talked earlier about the values, the values that Texans share. And if you look at issue after issue after issue that Beto campaigned on for the presidency of the United States, they weren't just at odds with Texans. They were hostile to Texans. He was to go take your guns and deny you your Second Amendment rights. We will not let that happen in the state of Texas. He stands for these open border policies that have led to nothing but chaos. If Beto were to be elected governor in the state of Texas, there would be no one standing up securing our border like what I'm doing every single day. If you, if you look at the very meaningful oil and gas jobs that put food on the table that help families pay their bills and provide a better life for those families. Beto wants to kill those oil and gas jobs and put them out of business denying a paycheck for tens of thousands of Texas families. But worst of all, very profoundly, during his campaign for the presidency, he showed that he really was not so much a Democrat as he was a socialist. He is a part of the Ocasio-Cortez wing of the Democrat Party. And that is hostile to the state of Texas. I welcome the challenge. I look forward to working with the people of Wilson County to make sure Texas remains a Republican-led state. I think in short, he said, Mr. O'Rourke, can you come and take it? Is that right? <laughs> Alan, thank you again for having us and your hospitality. Thank you, Wilson County, for opening your arms to us. Uh, thank you so much for all being here again. Mr. B and his family, we welcome you with open arms, Republican Party. With that, y'all have a blessed, wonderful day. Thank you. Please. Close the border! Yeah. 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 Y